All right, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today's uh, webinar. Uh, I hope we got the audio issues sorted out now. So I hope everyone is able to hear me loud and clear and also uh, see the presentation and also see my cam. Uh, let us know if you have any issues uh, in hearing us or seeing the slides, uh, you know, we'll look into it. But I think from uh, from the feedback from the rest of this looks like it's all OK now. Yeah, we'll get it started. So uh, in today's webinar, uh, we'll go through the uh, uh, different types of smart meters, the area of the application, and also talk about the all new Fronia smart meter WR. And also we'll talk about the uh, installation, commissioning, um, and some troubleshooting tips and tricks about the smart meters. So um, let me introduce myself. I'm Balaji, Balaji Ganesan. I'm the lead tech support uh, here at Fronius Australia. And in uh, today's webinar, we'll just go through the agenda uh, before we go into the actual slides. So um, we'll get started with why we need a Fronius smart meter and uh, different types of smart meter and the area of the application and uh, also uh, unveil the brand new Fronius smart meter WR, uh, how it's installed, some schematics about the smart meter, some commissioning and troubleshooting tips and tricks. And we'll stay at the end of the webinar and I'm here to answer all your questions. So yeah, feel free if you have any questions, uh, we'll answer those questions at the end of the webinar. All right, why do we need a smart meter, first of all? Because with the inverters uh, inbuilt monitoring card, which is the data manager card in case of a snap inverter or in case of a Gen 24, that would be a pilot, which is the communication card that that's built within the inverter. So uh, with those inbuilt communication cards, it's only possible to monitor how much the inverter is making and the other characteristics of the inverter, such as the MPPD power, uh, the current, the voltage of the inverter and such. But in order to see the consumption values, the consumption of the site, the loads, how much the loads are drawing. So in that case, we would need a Fronius smart meter. So. The Fronius smart meter is nothing but a bidirectional energy meter, which measures the loads and also the excess power that's being sent into the grid. All right. So apart from uh, that, the, sp the smart meter can also do some uh, other functions called the export limit, you know, uh, if the DNSP requires it. So uh, with the smart meter, you'll be able to monitor the self-consumption and the self-sufficiency rate analyze the usage pattern and it also you know if the usage rec pattern requires some change you know sometimes the self-sufficiency and the self-consumption of the system can be improvised by changing the usage pattern so uh, that's one of the main purpose of the smart meter and if the end user is unable to uh, increase or improvise their self-consumption or the self-sufficient rate, uh, self-sufficiency rates by changing the usage pattern, they can obviously go for a battery uh, storage system. So the smart meter can also be used to size an, uh, an optimal battery uh, system for the customer. And apart from that, as mentioned before, the smart meter is also used to meet the DNSP's requirement and compliance as such. Uh, if, the, if there are any uh, zero export settings or if there is an export limit within the PV system, the smart meter can also be used for that. Okay, and um, now let's go into the different types of smart meter, from your smart meters that are available out in, in the market. So, um, we have the 63 amp single phase smart meter, which is used for uh, single phase systems, such as single phase supplies, uh, mostly used in residential systems. And then we have the uh, 63 amp three phase smart meter, which is used for uh, three phase supply, predominantly in residential systems. And then we have the 50 K smart meter, which is used in uh, three phase uh, commercial systems. But in case of a 50K smart meter, we would need a current transformer CTs in order to measure the current. And I will talk about uh, the selection criteria for those CTs uh, in the upcoming slides. And 
Here we go, the all new Fronius Smart Meter WR. So what does WR stand for? The wide range. All right, so you guys would now be curious on uh, what is this wide range? What is this new Smart Meter about? Okay, so you guys may be already aware of our UL range of Smart Meters, the 240 volt UL and the 480 volt UL and also the other smart meters we that we were just mentioned in the previous slides. So with those smart meters, they are sort of, uh, you know, uh, the area of the application is limited in terms of the, the grid topology um, and stuff. But with this new smart meter, this the smart meter WR would be the successor of the UL meter. And you only need one smart meter for your uh, range of installation, starting from single phase, two phase, and three phase grids, three, uh, three phase uh, supply. And this can be used in both uh, residential and commercial systems. And it requires CTs, which is, uh, which is a voltage reference CT on the secondary side. We'll talk about a bit more about, uh, you know, the schematics, installation of the smart meter, and also the selection criteria of the CTs for all the smart meters that we have. So just a summary of uh, the different types of smart meters that we offer. So uh, just a table here out for your reference. So just going into the technical data a bit. Um, so we have the 63 amp single phase, which we mentioned, which can be used in single phase application. And the maximum current rating of the smart meter is 63 amp. Likewise, the same applies for the 63 amp three phase smart meter as well. And the 50K for large scale commercial applications, and you wouldn't be needing the CTs. And the new wide range smart meter uh, is that also needs CTs, but it can be used for single phase, two phase, and three phase applications. Uh, and it requires CT with a secondary side voltage rating of uh, 0.333 volts. And there is one difference between uh, the WR smart meter compared to the others. So all the, the rest of the other smart meters have to be mounted on the DIN rail, which means it goes on the switchboard. So it occupies, depending on the size, the 63M single phase occupies uh, two poles, whereas the 63M three phase and the 50K smart meter occupies up to uh, four poles on the switchboard. But whereas with the WR smart meter, it goes, uh, it's wall mounted, so it can even go on a wooden plank uh, on the switchboard and it doesn't have a display. So that's the difference. And for the different, the main difference between the 50K and the WR smart meter is um, for the 50K one, the CT ratio has to be entered on the smart meter itself. Whereas with the WR smart meter, it has to be uh, entered on the interface of the data manager card or pilot in case of a Gen24 inverter. And all the smart meters use Modbus RTU, RS485 for communication with the inverter. So let's go forward. Um, yeah, the installation of these smart meters, um, it's pretty much the same in, in terms of the Modbus uh, wiring for all these smart meters. Um, but there are like few uh, installation tips on wiring sort of things that we would recommend. So we would always recommend to follow the AS3000 uh, standards when it comes to installing a Fournier smart meter. Make sure uh, if you're, uh, you using a C bus rated uh, CAT5 or a CAT6 cable, and uh, just use one strand per terminal always of the same color, and the maximum distance between the Fournier smart meter and the data manager card uh, would be up to uh, 300 meters. So always recommended to use a proper C bus rated CAT5 or a CAT6 cable, or in, all, in you can also go for a proper industrial gear, great uh, Modbus cable if you have. And, and a very important point when it comes to uh, uh, tightening the AC terminals on the smart meter, please make sure that you use the proper torque uh, when you tighten the screws on the smart meters. Uh, it mostly applies for the 63 amp single phase, three phase, and the 50K smart meter. 
because if you don't use the proper uh, torque and uh, the screws are being over tightened, um, then the smart meter, then it may end up damaging the smart meter. So just few tips out there for your reference. Okay. Um, so before we go into the actual installation of the smart meter on the AC side, we'll just talk about, uh, you know, the interface that's available on our inverters. So um, we'll get started with the snap inverters, right? So with the snap inverters, when you open the bottom gray cover, you would get access to the data manager card. And with the data manager card, this is how it looks like. That's just an overview of the interface of the card. And this is the Modbus uh, termination port or the Modbus port of the, of the data manager card. Okay, and this is where the smart meter goes to. Uh, it's most, uh, for all the smart meters are connected to D plus, D minus, and the ground. So you have two grounds and D plus and uh, D minus up there. Okay, and then going forward, we have the Gen 24 inverters on which the interface is a bit different. It doesn't have a data manager card. It comes with the pilot. So the pilot is more, a bit more advanced than what a data manager card can do. And also it has uh, two uh, Modbus, Modbus posts, as you would see, M0 and M1. And M1 is used for connecting the smart meter and M0 is used for connecting the batteries. Okay. And, um, you know, on the, both the Modbus zero and M1 terminals, uh, you would have a terminating resistor, which is, uh, nothing but, uh, but an inbuilt switch. That's the 120 ohm resistor. And, uh, from the factory, uh, it, both the terminating resistors or the 120 ohm resistors that's built within the pilot is on on portion. Okay, so just an overview uh, of the Modbus ports on the pilot interface. So one on the left is the M0 terminals and one on the right is the M1 terminals. So the smart meters would be connected to the M1 terminals to M1 plus, M1 minus, and the ground. Okay. All right. So then comes the installation location of the smart meter. So there are two uh, locations where the smart meter can be installed. One is the feed in point, or otherwise it's called as the grid connection point uh, when it comes to Gen 24 inverters. So with the feed in point, um, the typical arrangement on the main switchboard would be the smart meter comes right after the site mains. And then it, uh, there comes the household sub circuits and then the solar supply main switch. So here in this case, the solar supply main switch is on the load side of the smart meter. And then um, in this case, we would also need to make sure that the solar and the loads are not in series. They must be in parallel. Otherwise the consumption values measured by the smart meter would be incorrect, all right? And then here comes the consumption part. So for most of the installation um, of the PV systems in Australia, the smart meter has to be installed in feed in point. And consumption part is not very commonly used here. So, but let me explain what a consumption part is here. The difference is on the consumption part, the solar supply main switch comes on the grid side or, or it's installed on the grid side of the Fronier smart meter and, uh, and, and to the load side of the smart meter is just the household sub circuits. And this uh, type of uh, installation is not very uh, widely known in Australia, okay? All right, the consumption path, it's also called as the load branch. Uh, so the load branch is the term that we use for the location of the smart meter on the interface of the Gen 24 inverter, just for your reference. Okay. And um, this schematic here just shows you an you know, overview of how the smart single phase uh, 63 amp smart meter is wired. So you have on the smart meter, you have 33, 34, and 35. So which is connected to D plus, D minus, and the ground. The line in comes from the side mains, line out goes to the consumer mains or the loads. Okay. And uh, it's very similar 
to when you connect the smart meter to the Gen 24 interface as well. So uh, M1 plus on the Gen 24 equals D plus, M1 minus equals D minus, and the ground is nothing but the negative. So it's pretty much the same on the on the Gen 24s as well, except D plus and D minus. It's called M1 plus and M1 minus. All right. Okay. Perfect. And then um, we have the 63 amp three phase smart meter, which is very similar in wiring when it comes to uh, the Modbus. So we have instead of 33, 34, and 35, we have A, B, and C and you have all the three phases. So what's important here uh, when it comes to the installation is the smart meter uh, requires a reference neutral. Without a reference neutral, you would see that the smart meters display is blank, or in other words, it won't be lit up. So in case whilst you're installing as um, one of these smart meters with the display on it, and if it's not powered up, please check if it's got a reference neutral connected to it, okay? All right, going forward. All right, there's an interesting FAQ out here, uh, which we get asked over the phones as well at times. Can a three-phase smart meter used in a two-phase network? The answer is yes, it can be installed in a two-phase network provided it's not a square line. Because if it's a square line, the, the voltage rating on a three-phase, 63 and three-phase smart meter is not sufficient. So it would rather end up going for uh, for the new smart WR smart meter. Okay. All right, let's go to the next slide. And here we have the schematics for the 50K smart meter. And as you would see, it requires CTs. And you know the CTs are wired onto uh, the S1 and S2 are wired onto the top. And then you have the, the Modbus connections 33, 34, and 35, which is connected to the data manager card or the Gen24 inverters pilot, okay? And uh, now let's talk about the selection criteria of the CTs for this smart meter, for the 50K smart meter, and then we'll go to the selection criteria for the new WR smart meter as well, all right? Okay, so what is the selection criteria for the CTs? Here we go. So the primary current rating of the CT shall be equal or greater than the AC current rating of the main switch, the grid. And the secondary current, most commonly for this smart meter, it requires a CT with a, uh, with a current reference on the secondary side. So it can, the most common ones are the five amp ones, but you can also use a CT if it's rated to one amp on the secondary side, but the commonly used ones are the five amp ones. Okay, and then, uh, it would also involve calculating the CT ratio, which has to be entered on the smart meters display. This is very important to enter the CT ratio on the 50K smart meter, because uh, without the CT, uh, CT ratio, it is not possible for the smart meter to calculate the right consumption data. So how do we calculate the CT ratio? It's quite simple you know what the primary current rating of your CT is and the secondary current rating of your CT is. And it usually can be found on the name plate of the CT itself. So uh, let's say if the CT is rated to 150 amps on the primary side and five amps on the secondary side, the CT ratio is nothing but the division of the primary to the secondary current, which is uh, 150 slash five amps that equals to uh, 30 amps. And when you enter this uh, ratio on the smart meter, it has to be entered as uh, 0030. Um, bit more details on the selection criteria for the CTs, apart from the CT rating itself, it's important to know the VA rating of the CT because um, you know it would vary depending on your CT cables how long the CT cables are run between the smart meter and the actual CTs. And uh, the self-consumption of the smart meter itself is uh, 0.5 VA. So always please make sure that your CT's uh, VA rating is uh, greater than the sum of the uh, line resistance at different uh, lead lengths 
plus the actual self-consumption of the CD. So we also have a document uh, that will be attached to this webinar tool at the end of the presentation. And the copy of this presentation will also be included along with that. So um, that will be done at the end of the webinar. Okay, cool. So um, just going back to the slide, um, so apart from third party CTs, now we have now Fronius uh, sells our own, we, we do sell our own CTs, and these CTs can be purchased uh, from our uh, sales partners, from Fronius authorized sales partners. Okay, and now let's uh, we are going back to how to enter the CT ratio on the smart meter itself. In case if it's a 50k smart meter. So uh, you need to press the P and arrow together, enter the code as 0001, and then um, go to the next menu, which is the CT menu, where you would uh, be entering the actual CT ratio. Here, in this case, we calculated the ratio to be 30. And when you enter that on the actual meter, it has to be entered as 0030. And we don't need to change uh, any uh, any of the other settings such as the VT ratio because we are not using any VTs here. And finally, you save those settings by entering the passcode as triple zero one. Okay. All right. Going forward, uh, why is it important to set the CT ratio correctly? One of uh, one of the FAQs that's been uh, asked to us is important because if the CT ratio is not entered correctly, the smart meter will not calculate the consumption values uh, properly. So it is important to enter the CT ratio on the smart meter. And the same applies to the WR smart meter as well. The CT ratio has to be entered on the data manager interface or the pilot interface. And we'll talk more about that in the upcoming slides. There we go with the for the smart meter WR, the wide range smart meter, uh, here are the schematics. Uh, and in terms of the Modbus connection, uh, it's pretty much straightforward for the data manager card. You have D plus, D minus, and the negative mark on the meter itself. It then goes to the respective Modbus uh, terminals on the data manager card. And then you have, if it's a three phase supply, this is how you would wire it. We would have the CTs connected to line one, line two, and line three of the smart meter on the CT side. And then uh, you would have the voltage references as well. Okay. And then in case of a Gen 24, it's pretty much the same. Only the, um, the terms or the Modbus terminals on the Gen 24 would differ, but that's nothing but D plus is connected to M1 plus. D minus connected to M1 minus and the, and the ground to the ground. Okay. And uh, in terms of the actual uh, resistor for this smart meter, because uh, for the rest of the other smart meter, 63 amp single phase, three phase, and the 50K smart meter, there would be an uh, external 120 ohm resistor that goes across the smart meter terminals as well at, uh, itself. So that's nothing but the Modbus terminating resistor, which goes on the smart meter. So on the 63 amp uh, phase single phase, it goes across 33 and 34. Likewise, on 63 amp three phase, the Modbus resistor goes across uh, A and B. But with the WR smart meter, it's very similar to our UL meter as well. Uh, the dip switch number seven is the internal 120 ohm resistor so uh, when you get the smart meter you would see a few dip switches on the bottom of the smart meter starting from one so if you need to enable the 120 ohm resistor on this smart meter you need to um, enable the dip switch number seven and the dip switch number one is for the modbus addressing so that's what has been uh, shown on this slide the dip switch number one is for the modbus addressing and the dip switch number seven is to enable the 120 ohm resistor. Okay. And apart from that, unless and until you want to change the Modbus addressing, there's no need to, for the other terminals or you don't need to change, uh, you know, other dip switches. Okay. 
going forward, so uh, what about the selection and the connection of the CTs? So as I mentioned before, um, you know, the primary side current rating of the CT shall be equal or greater than the, the AC current from the grid or uh, rated more than the current rating of the main switchboard or the main circuit breaker of the property. And on the secondary side, requires a voltage reference CT of 0.333 volts. It's very important because uh, if you use a CT with the, which is rated to 5 amp or 1 amp on the secondary side for this smart meter, it may potentially damage the smart meter. So make sure uh, you only use a smart uh, the CT with the car with the voltage reference of 0.333 volts on the secondary side. Okay. And uh, this could be a good example here. Let's say if this smart meter is used in a two-phase supply or two-phase connection, please make sure that the unused CT terminals are, uh, you run a jumper across the unused CT terminals, and also you can uh, run a jumper across the uh, unused line terminal to the neutral just to prevent any stray voltages from, uh, from getting measured. Okay. Going forward, and you know, similar to the current reference smart meters, you know, the the, the smart the CTs with the uh, current rating of five amp on the secondary side. We also have Fronius also sells a, a CT with secondary side rating of 0.333 volts, and this can be uh, purchased from our sales partners as well. And uh, if you had to use this smart meter on a single phase supply, this is how it should be wired. Just run a jumper across the unused CT uh, terminals. If there is no jumper run across the unused CT terminals, then when you try to activate the smart meter, it would come up with the message uh, smart meter activated, but check cabling error. So if you uh, ever see the smart meter come up with the error, so uh, check if there is a jumper run across the unused CT terminals, and also you can run a jumper across the uh, unused line terminals to the neutral. Okay. Now let's get into the commissioning part of the smart meter along with the snap inverter. So once the meter has been installed, how would you commission it? So you go by activating the Wi-Fi access point and connecting your smart device to the inverter's Wi-Fi access point. And uh, the default password to connect to it is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And once it's connected, you can either use the Solar Start app or open a web browser and enter the IP address uh, 192.168.250.181, okay? And let's say if you are using the app, you could uh, complete the solar web visit first and then go to the 192 IP address and then activate the smart meter or use that technician wizard straight away. Okay. So let's say uh, in order to activate the smart meter, let's go to the 192 IP address and then go to settings. And once you go to settings, uh, please make sure that you have a service password that's been set up because the meter menu is protected by the service password, which is only available or can be unlocked or accessed by the technicians or installers. So once you have the service password set up, go to meter and then choose the type of meter as Fronia Smart Meter. And once you choose that, click on settings. And once you click on settings, the inverter would, uh, the data manager card would come up with a setting similar to this, uh, state okay, and then that's why you would choose between uh, feed-in point and consumption path. So mostly, in most of the cases, we would choose feed-in point, and then you would also uh, get the instantaneous power values that's measured by the smart meter, okay? And once that's done, please click on the tick to save the settings, and uh, in case of uh, uh, smart meter WR, uh, once it's activated, you also need to choose the type of grid uh, and also enter the CT ratio. Here, that's why it's important to uh, enter the CT ratio. 
Otherwise, the smart meter will, uh, will give you incorrect consumption data and the grid type must be chosen accordingly as well. Okay, so for three phase, you would choose Y delta, for single phase, of course, single phase, and for two phase systems or straight line, uh, you would be choosing split phase. Once you click on OK, tick, click on the tick and save the settings. All right, so now you know how to activate a uh, Fournier smart meter on the interface of the data manager card, but how would you set up an export limit in case if your DNSP requires it? This is how we do it. So right below meter, you have this option called DNO editor. So under DNO editor, you would have an option called dynamic power reduction. And under dynamic power reduction, you have a couple of options here, like entire system and weakest space. So if it's just normal export limit that's required by the DNSP, just choose uh, entire system and under entire system, enter the total DC power, you know, the capacity of the PV array in watts. And here you would have two options, hard limit and soft limit. So for installations in Australia, only soft limit export limit applies. So only use soft limit if the DNSP requires uh, any export limit and hard limit is not required by any of the DNSPs in Australia. So uh, if you end up choosing hard limit, then uh, you know you may notice that the inverter would be trying to uh, get into the hard limit uh, mode, and then uh, the inverter would restart by itself because it's not able to achieve that hard limit. So please don't, um, uh, you don't have to use this hard limit option. So only use soft limit if the DNSP requires export limit. And uh, the weakest phase export limit is only applicable for uh, inverter installations using three phase inverters. So this will not apply if you use uh, multiple single phase inverters across three phases. And it only applies for uh, installation using uh, three phase uh, inverters. And in case of uh, multiple inverters on site, you can use, uh, you can daisy chain the inverters together. And once the export limit value is set, click on the tick to save the settings and also make sure that the uh, dynamic power reduction is set as number one. So using the arrows, you can uh, make changes to it and uh, always make sure in case of systems with export limit, the dynamic power reduction is set as number one. Okay. And also another recommendation that we would pass on is uh, in terms of entering the export limit value, we would recommend the value to be entered in watts in, instead of uh, percentage. It's always better in terms of watts. Okay. And now let's go to um, you know the procedure on how to commission a smart meter with uh, Gen24. It's very similar. And before you activate or you know once you make the connections, make sure that both uh, the 120 ohm resistor dip switch is enabled by default from the factory. The 120 ohm resistor is turned on, but it's uh, just good to double check out there on the field as well. Okay, the procedure is the same in terms of how you would access the inverters interface, except on the snap inverters, you would go to the inverters display, but whereas on the Gen 24s, uh, you would just activate the access point by scanning your finger once on the sensor button and uh, connect your phone to uh, connect your phone or your smart device to the inverter's Wi-Fi access point and it's the same default password uh, one two three four five six seven eight and uh, the same IP address uh, to connect or access the pilot interface which is 192.168.250.181 in case if you're connecting it to the wi-fi access point or if you're connecting your laptop or your computer to the inverter's lan port the lan one port uh, the ip address to access the pilot interface would be 169.254.0.180 okay and once that's done um, you would be going to the installation wizard so during the product commissioning, uh, you can add the PV, after adding the PV generator, you can add the primary meter, which is the power meter. Once you add the power meter, you can choose the location of the meter as grid connection point, which is nothing but the feed-in point for snap inverters. 
but on the Gen 24s, you will have to choose it as grid connection point. And uh, once that's done, um, you know, you would go to the next page. Uh, sorry. So um, with the Gen 24s, uh, where you would be choosing it as a grid connection point, sometimes when the smart meter is not detected, uh, you know, you may have to check the Modbus settings under the communication settings of the pilot. All right. So in case if the meter can't be found, just go to the same IP address, 192.168.250.181 and go to communication. And under communication, you would have an option called Modbus. So under Modbus, you would see the two Modbus interfaces, M0 and M1. So under M1, not Modbus RTU interface one, please make sure it's set to master. If it's disabled, then the smart meter will not be found by the inverter. So please check the connections first on the, between the smart meter and the inverter, and also check if the Modbus M1 terminal is activated on the pilot interface, okay? All right, so uh, once the meter has been activated, um, and if you require to set up an export limit, the process is the same. Uh, you would need to go to, uh, whilst you are setting up the product, you can do that. So under product, uh, you would have an option called uh, export limitation under functions on iOS, where you can uh, set the export limit. But in case, uh, if you want to do it after the commissioning, uh, it's pretty much the same process again. You would need to go into the interface of the pilot go to uh, safety and grid regulations. So here, you know, you would need a technician password, which is very similar to the service password on the snap inverters. So make sure that you have a have your technician password ready. And once the technician password is entered, it will unlock the this protected setting, the safety and grid regulations, and you would need to go to export limitation. All right. Under export limitation, uh, you can choose if it's just a normal export limit, you can choose limit for entire system, enter the total DC power that's connected to the inverter. And here again, only choose uh, export limit uh, control via soft limit. And then uh, enter the allowed export limit value in watts. Okay. And uh, more importantly, once the export limit settings have been set, you need to set the uh, priority for the export limit here as well. So under IO power management, make sure that you uh, make the export limitation as number one priority. And once the priority for that one has been set, click on click on save to save those settings, which is very important as well. Okay. Now we are almost done with the installation and the commissioning part of the smart meter, you know, the old smart meters we had and also the new smart meters. Now let's get into the troubleshooting part and some frequently asked questions. Okay. All right. What are the CTs that can be used for the new wide range uh, smart meter? All right, so as mentioned in our previous slides, uh, you would need a CT with the secondary side rating of uh, 0.333 volts, and that is which is a voltage reference CT. And if a, if a current reference CT is used on the on this new WR smart meter, that may end up damage uh, damaging the smart meter. So please make sure you use a CT with a uh, with the voltage reference rating of 0.333 volts on the secondary side. All right, and uh, what's the next question? All right, I'm installing uh, two single phase inverters across uh, two different phases, and the DNSP requires export limitation per phase. What should be done? So in this case, if the DNSP is um, you know quite stringent about having export limit per phase, then the only option you have is to use uh, two single phase smart meters, one per phase, and then do the export limit. Okay, that's a three-phase smart meter manage export limitation per phase. Yes, it does. Only when used along with the three-phase inverter, 
and the software on the data manager card should be uh, should be updated to the latest software uh, because this export limitation per phase or in other words, the weakest phase export limit option is only available in the new software versions of the data manager card. Okay, going forward, here we go. And another interesting question. My customer has a 1.5 kilowatt system installed, you know, uh, that could be with a third party inverter or just an old uh, Fronius uh, inverter as well. Okay. If he wants to upgrade the system with the Fronius 505 kilowatt inverter in addition to the existing system and uh, where the DNSP requires 5 kilowatt export limit, can this be done by using a Fronius smart meter? Yes, it can be done. In this case, since the export limit value is greater than the uh, output rating of the third party inverter installed. This can be done. So, in this case, what you would need to do is just connect the smart meter to the Fronius inverter and then set the export limit as 5 kilowatt because the smart meter would be seeing the uh, third party inverter as a negative load. So, therefore, you just need to set the export limit as 5 kilowatt and it would uh, communicate with the data manager card and ramp up the snap inverter according to what's being measured on the smart meter. Okay, next question. Okay, the Fronius smart meter is not getting detected in the data manager card's uh, web interface. What should I do? So first of all, please check the Modbus connection between the smart meter and the data manager card please make sure that you use um, you know, one single strand for per terminal. Let's say if you are using the pair orange and orange white, you can just use orange for D plus, orange white for D minus, and a different color uh, for, the, for the ground connection. Also make sure that there, there is a resistor across uh, the smart meter terminals, the 120 ohm resistor, and also make sure that the neutral, the reference neutral is connected to the smart meter. All right, next one. Uh, unable to visualize uh, consumption values during the night time. Okay, this is a very uh, easy fix. In case uh, if the consumption values are not visible during the night time on SolarWave, please make sure that the night mode is enabled either on the inverter or enabled on the interface of the data manager card. So this is only applicable for the snap inverters. The night mode is not applicable to the Gen 24 inverters because it, stay, it stays online even during the night time. So this is only applicable for snap inverters. In case if your customers are saying that they are unable to see the consumption values during the night time, please make sure that the night mode is uh, enabled. All right, I think we got, we got a last frequently asked question over there. And then uh, we are almost done uh, with the presentation slides. And then we will jump on to your questions. Okay, I got a smart meter WR install. It is working, but I'm getting incorrect consumption values on solar web. So in that case, what I would be doing is making sure that this entered CT ratio is correct. And also you've chosen the right grid type. And once these checks are done, I would also be checking if the CTs are being uh, wired properly and also make sure that the CTs are facing the right direction. Okay. All right. And um, some of the common errors that can be avoided uh, when installing a smart meter, please make sure that you don't swap D plus and D minus on the, on the meter. Uh, if it's swapped, then you won't be then the data manager card or the pilot won't be able to uh, detect the smart meter okay and this is one topic that we just discussed uh, in the previous slides in case if the if your consumption values are incorrect please make sure that your cts uh, measure the right uh, phase uh, and uh, make sure that the reference phase whichever phase the ct is measuring the voltage reference must be on the same phase. So make sure that the current transformers match the voltage um, match the voltage phases, 
and make sure that the CPs uh, measures the same current on the same phase. So if the CPs are swapped or if it's got an incorrect phase reference, then the consumption values uh, would be incorrect. And also make sure that the arrow on the CT is facing the right direction. If the arrow is not facing the right direction, then the consumption values would be incorrect as well. Okay. Um, before we end this presentation, just want to give an overview about uh, the resources that we have developed for installers and customers out there. So we do have our YouTube channels uh, where we regularly upload our video tutorials, uh, tips and tricks, and also short videos about our products and also other solutions that we offer. So please make sure that you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also you can uh, bookmark this uh, link up here and uh, you would have all the uh, recordings and also other webinars uh, in this YouTube channel and the playlist. And then apart from the YouTube channel, uh, we have a dedicated tech support page on our website, uh, which has access to all the technical resources white papers and other quick guides and it all you can also access the inverters latest software updates and also the data manager software update files uh, so please make sure that you bookmark uh, this link on your mobile uh, web browser and it could be handy for your uh, later purpose okay and uh, if you are after some additional information about the digital solutions and apps that we offer here's the link and I uh, will be attaching um, this presentation uh, to this webinar tool uh, in about a moment uh, where you can access all this information. So here is the link where you can access um, our, our digital tools. And uh, last but not least, um, the Fronius Solar SOS, the Solar Online Support Tool. It's one of the digital tools that we offer for our installers. So uh, if you're not fully aware of uh, what SOS is, uh, please watch our webinar on SOS. And maybe if you don't have an SOS account yet, please register for an SOS account, which you can use to raise support cases. And also um, if you require any replacement items like replacement inverters or components that can also be requested via SOS. And as of now, our target response time uh, for SOS uh, cases has been less than uh, 24 hours. And this has been consistent from the, from the month of January this year. So we are really prioritizing cases raised via SOS. So in case if you're not familiar with SOS, please go to our YouTube channel and then watch our webinar on SOS as well. All right, so that's it from my side, everyone. I hope everyone found the webinar uh, quite informative. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer now. So I will um, just post my, uh, uh, end my presentation here, and I'll just stay on and answer your questions. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening.